Uh, right, so I'm going to talk about curl containers in the context of what happened last year. Um, uh, right, so curl, uh, we build containers and we push them out to um, Docker Hub and, and Quay now. Um, actually, we can go to those just for fun. How do you click things in here? Yeah, okay, there we go. Um, right, so this is uh, on, on Docker Hub and um, uh, it's been, we've been there now for six years, maybe seven years, maybe even five years. Oh, five years, five years. Yes, since I just blogged about it. Right, right. Five, five, years, yeah, five years, yeah, five years, yeah. Um, uh, and we now have six billion whatever pulls or asking for pulls. Uh, you know, it's it's not very cool, uh, not very clear on things. Um, and and now we push to uh, Quay as well. So, um, I work at Red Hat. Uh, Quay is Red Hat stuff. Um, I use Podman instead of Docker because it seems to be more stable and less opinionated on on a few things. I would recommend. Um, you know, uh, taking a look at it, um, and I, I guess what uh, the the future is unclear in terms of um, Quay and Docker. Uh, at the moment, uh, we keep on getting kind of little micro changes to our relationship with Docker. Uh, you know, and it just kind of points to a direction. I think at some point, maybe we won't be on Docker. Uh, though uh, I'm not saying that is my decision. I think uh, I think it's just. Are we gonna push to Docker? It might be that the moment we don't, we stop doing that. They just include curl images into their library, and they do it. Yeah. So I'd rather do that than have some weird legal relationship. Yeah. Which we kind of they keep on trying to <coughs> do some weird legal stuff, and I, I I don't have the time for that kind of stuff. And Quay, for me, for pushing out seems to be you know fairly straightforward for now. Things change. Um, Anyways, uh, uh, we, we push out to there. We also push out to, um, maybe not a lot of people know, um, is to uh, uh, to GitHub itself. So um, we have, um, uh, the curl container has uh, build jobs that uh, would, uh, you know, we, we build the releases and push out to Quay and, and, and to Git and to, um, to Docker Hub. But also um, we build uh, master every day. Yeah. Um, and that gets pushed to uh, uh, to curl packages. So um, you can, if you want the latest and greatest um, uh, uh, curl containers, you don't have to go to uh, to um, to Quay or um, or to the Docker Hub. Um, this is good for you know testing and, and all that type of stuff. And um, the other thing that's kind of cool is um, um, we're now building curl base. So. Uh, the idea is that the, we have, you know, sort of a couple of variations of containers. One is uh, multi-architecture, curl multi, and that's the one, that's what I call the appliance. That's what everyone uses. Um, the, the other is uh, curl base, so if you want to use it as a base and add JQ or whatever, you use that. Uh, and then I have a, a, a curl dev, uh, which is sort of an instant development environment, and that's what's used to actually build the curl base, which is then built to, to build the, the curl appliance. So we're sort of drinking our own champagne there. Um, and and to, and, and uh, we're gonna clear this out, oh yeah. Uh, so if we run, um, I can run uh, from master direct from GitHub. Uh, and that's that's the latest and greatest. And I'm running it, um, actually no one run it that way, one moment. I want to actually run so I'm just going to supply, oh, not file and path, what are you talking about? Uh, curl, <coughs> oh, that's curl dev, yeah, sorry. So this is curl, the, the appliance uh, image. Um, and I think curl master <coughs> is actually just Alpine. This is not the multi, I'm just gonna run curl single architecture. Um, and I haven't pulled it in a while, so it's pulling it, and then it runs it. And this is the latest and greatest built today, and you can test behavior out uh, immediately of latest master without building the code yourself. Um, the other thing you can do is, is let's say you want to um, uh, you want to check something really quickly in terms of building. Um, we have an instant development environment, curl dev, um, and uh, this we do want to run interactively. And I could uh, mount my own volume of curl on here and build my curl from this um, uh, environment, but. I also build it with um, with a copy, a Git clone of um, of curl as well. Um, 
if I run that, I'm now in. If I look here and if I run, I know, it's got everything you need. Um, and there's a Debian version, there's a Fedora version. Um, uh, it's, you know, it's got everything you need to build um, and do stuff. And it should do it right. Uh, so I, I find this really handy personally um, to just uh, very quickly pull down a, a, like for demonstrating to people how to learn how to developing curl you just say pull it down and start start editing yeah um, okay let's go back to the presentation sort of jumping around here um, yeah curl has six billion um, and quay at the moment has uh, has less sort of um, uh, what does it do for graphs these days Sure, takes a while, maybe. No. It's about 90,000 a day, so it's certainly not at the point of, um, of, uh, of Docker Hub. Uh, oh, so I broke, sorry, excellent. Um, Ooh, right. yeah, well, they're gonna call me up. <laughs> what are you doing, Jim? Uh, yeah, so it's here, I guess. So it, we'll hover over one of these, it's like uh, uh, 96,000 on Thursday. And this is probably more honest. It's not the weirdness with Docker Hub. Like this is probably ninety-six thousand pulls or, or you know real events happening. What's frustrating is there's still one curl above us, <laughs> and it has lots of CVEs in it. And this is one of the original motivations of doing the curl containers. You know, I went to to um to Docker Hub and I was aghast that there were some versions of curl with literally like thirty. CVEs in it and millions of pulls and I'm like oh my god if this continues <laughs> life is not going to be good for curl so uh, one of the main motivations to do a curl container was to get rid of um uh, of this sort of uh, old version old container sort of becoming part of build pipelines and, and all that type of stuff anyways I'm working to get to the top spot here um, hopefully uh, it'll be soon and uh, we now have curl base as well so uh, that's now I guess getting used a little bit more um, by other people, and if we go to hub, uh, curl images, curl base, uh, that's probably, that's that 10K as well. Um, other things you can do with these images, um, I guess that are interesting, and something uh, you know, we do with a lot of software at Red Hat, is um, I wanna uh, validate it, or I wanna understand, you know, I've, I've, I've now, u I'm not, I now want to use this container, um, and actually, let's, you can, you know, I'll go to Quay because I probably have that. Uh, no, I don't actually, okay. Bear with me. Curl, curl, latest, I guess. So Cosign allows me to easily introspect a container and to check if the signatures are, 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 are what I expected or, or not. And um, I can uh, uh, very easily um, verify um, using cosine. Uh, it just sort of seals up, you know. Uh, I think I have cosine pub with that public key. Probably, yes, I do. Pub, yeah. Okay. Um, do this latest, and that should uh, verify and send back a whole bunch of stuff. Um, you know that things are verified. Uh, this is a big J JSON blob of stuff. Um, yeah. Oh, no. Updating local node. Oh, there's an error. Remote mirror invalid key. Oh, maybe I don't have the right key. Um, bear with me. Uh, cosine pub. Oh, crap. Cosine pub. Did I change it? Oh no, I didn't use that one. Um, maybe I copied the wrong one. I don't know. Anyways, using cosine. I don't know what's going on there. The, the demo gods have struck me down. I'll have to take a look at that. <laughs> In theory, you should be able to verify with cosine. Yeah. And the idea is with um, with uh, with container re repositories, you can stuff a whole bunch of stuff on the registry now. Yeah. We can stuff this, uh, the, the, you know, this uh, uh, the ability to uh, the, it, it's signing, and we can stuff attestation. So. When we build a uh, curl container, we do a lot to it. Like we, we do we do plan A B scan. We do all of the suite of scans for um, for containers for vulnerabilities. 
And each one of those uh, we can inject as an attestation inside of the container itself. Um, an attestation is just a cryptographic thing that we can say, Jimmy said he scanned this with this, and you can verify that. You can trust this if you trust Jimmy. If you don't, that's fine too. Um, but it, the, you know, it's uh, the attestations are now becoming a mechanism in software, and you, you're going to find them being embedded in things like S bombs, for example. Um, and that's another thing I'd like to do is to generate. I can now auto generate the S bomb of the curl container itself and throw that up on the registry. So if someone wants to introspect on what's in the container and the the build of, of curl. Um, Uh, other things, uh, Builder. Uh, anyone know Builder? This container building system. I have to admit, I'm not a big. Uh, I, I I don't know that much about containers. Um, it's close to me. There's some some guys in Red Hat working on Builder, so I can ask them uh, annoying questions all day long. Um, but if you're interested, you can um, take a look at the uh, at the container uh, repo. Close to Podman, or am I thinking wrong with that? Uh, yeah, you, you can uh, use Podman and Docker actually with Builder. Uh, oh, you want to use Podman, ah. you really don't want to. Um, yeah. Why am I not? What am I doing? This in orgs too much. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah. So if we look at the, the new build, um, you know, this I think it's this year, um, I redid the whole uh, the whole repo. And before it was, uh, I think, the Docker container, uh, or Curl Docker, Docker, yeah, which has been um, uh, retired, uh, deprecated. And that was just a mess of shell scripts, really bad. Didn't really, you know, it needed me to run it and then carefully push things. Um, so we moved from this really fragile, brittle, mess to a different fragile brittle mess <laughs> using Builder. Um, and if you know, uh, uh, I, I've tried to encapsulate um, these into easy to understand things, but I fear that it's probably not very clear. I'll tell you, this is more to do, I think, with the maturity of the tools surrounding containers than my, you can blame me as well, but anyways. If we dive into any of these, um, you can see Builder is a, is a language uh, uh, that allows you to manipulate um, <coughs> containers. Um, and you can use Builder not in a shell script, you could probably use it in Python and some other host language. Um, uh, but it gives you primitives for, you know, uh, building a, a, a container from a base image, um, and then I want to do stuff with that. I want to inject some metadata into that container. Um, I want to uh, run something in this, and in this case, this is a the dev image. So I've been, I have three flavors of the dev, dev Im image. One is Alpine because our target distribution uses Alpine. Um, one is Fedora. One is uh, Debian. You know because uh, I like to do stuff in Fedora, and uh, I figured maybe if um, if uh, if you want to use Debian, you know, or, or other other people. Anyways, Builder, you're able to run stuff, so you can run app get update easily. Build this kind of uh, not as bad as a lot of the other things that do this type of thing. Uh, I would say if you're if you're in the business of crafting containers, um, um, I would say uh, investigate using uh, Builder instead of messing about with uh, Docker files and sort of carefully cr crafting things. Builder gives you a bit more dynamic, and we need a little bit of a dynamic approach because we're not just generating one thing. We're generating a series of things that gets um, uh, inherited, so I need some some uh, logic here. For better or worse, um, it has enabled us to um, um, to to cast everything in CI. So we now have a bunch of CI jobs. Um, one of them is the the dailies, which is uh, build the master image, which I just showed you running, and that pushes to GitHub uh, repo. Uh, we also build um, the master multi arch images. Uh, the multi arch are uh, to build them takes a, a lot longer. I guess now it takes it used to take six hours. Now it takes about fifty minutes to build each uh, architecture um, uh, and pack it all in and, and and present it as one one container. Um, we also build the the dev master image every day, and then 
um, we build uh, uh, the multi uh, every day, and then we do the releases. So um, whenever we do a release, which is, uh, you know, I'll, I'll make a release branch, I'll raise a PR, uh, and then we'll go and um, create the release. Uh, you know, I'll go here and Anyways, if I do this normally from the command line, what am I doing this here, Dan? Uh, oh, maybe I'm not logged in? I don't know. Oh, no, I'm not logged in. I don't use uh, this GitHub account for, uh, I keep working in the curl a bit separate. Oh, so secret account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a few of them. <laughs> Different personas. <laughs> Not so much for a real name thing. No, 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 no. <laughs> so anyways, I can't do it. Though. This guy called Jim Fuller from Red Hat. Um, so anyways, I'll create a release, create a tag, and then that fires off the event for um, a release to be made. And then the release, if we look at uh, what the release uh, does, this is pro probably the most... Um, um, <coughs> I'll probably go to... To take a look at what it does. Um, there we go. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, so we check out the re repo. Uh, we log into the registry because we want to push it to places. Some, uh, in this case, this is the release, so we want to push it to Docker Hub and Quay. Um, we update the environment with the stuff we need. Build up being, you know, very important. Um, uh, we install, uh, uh, you know, we're doing a, uh, a series of builds here. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, install the dev depths. And then we sniff from curl GitHub's release, what's the latest release. Um, and then uh, we use that everywhere uh, to pull down the tarball that is created. Um, and then we, we only build releases of containers from the tarball. We're not building from... Uh, you know, from any clone or anything like that. Uh, and then we uh, we build that, uh, and we're building the multi-image. Anything we're pushing to Quay or to um, or to uh, Docker Hub is the is the multi-image. Uh, and then we do a few other things to it. So um, we want to scan um, uh, uh, the image, and we do a couple of things for scanning. One is I have. Um, uh, a special image I make for scanning itself. So it's uh, I just create uh, uh, I I base off of curl to embed into the curl container scanning tools. Uh, and then once once that's done, I I use cosine to sign everything. And then I'll push that key to the registry itself, so you can do the verification. Uh, and then we have various pushes. So once we're done. We want to push to everywhere, um, and then uh, verify along the way. So once we push, we verify in situ. In other words, we're verifying that we've pushed something to the registry. So that's sort of the most complicated uh, uh, workflow. All right. So the build a system is complicated, but I, I think it's sufficiently abstracted and it's not overly egregious in terms of other, there's other things that can be even more complicated. Basically, I guess the thing to say is that if you want to do something, I see, I saw that um, Daniel figured it out, but I'm sure it wasn't a lot of fun. Uh, but if you have to do stuff, um, uh, you know, let's say in curl you want, uh, uh, you want to add some library, some standard library, or change a configure flag to add something. Um, it, it's, it's usually possible through interaction with the shell script. In other words, if you go to the create appliance image, you'll see that um, uh, we pull in, uh, actually, what am I talking about, the appliance image, the base image, because um, that's where we build curl to. Um, you'll see that we have various uh, uh, inputs for, uh, you know, for setting configurations and all that type of stuff. Actually, Jim, um, now I'm thinking about it, am I doing it in dev? Uh, Excuse me. A bit of a brain fart here. Yeah, what's going on? The the other sort of um, uh, 
uh, thing to, to be mindful of is uh, that a lot of, we're very conservative. In other words, we've tried to not have a billion people get really upset because it's not running in their CI that runs a hundred thousand times a day. And somehow, you know, we've avoided, you know, the, <coughs> the amount of issues over the past couple of years have been surprisingly small. But I think that's because I've resisted all attempts at change, <laughs> you know. Don't add anything. Add anything that just really minimally makes sense. Um, uh, I'm I'm going to take a look at the um, uh, like all the distros uh, configure flags and try to find some intersection, and and, and try to introduce that maybe <coughs> in the next build. Mm -hmm. But generally, um, I think we've been very safe, and that that has helped us. If we look at the, um, the current curl container uh, issues, we have a very very small set of issues. Uh, one of them was quite valid in that um, build a, the building tool needs to be up for refreshed. Nothing we did broke it, but we have to do another release with a later later version of, of build a. Um, but there are some open questions in terms of, um, you know, should we have uh, more architectures or should we uh, add LDAP, LDAP S support or, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, out of all these, I think we're going to enable uh, HTTP3, H3, um, as soon as possible. So next steps, uh, enable H3, more variation. Yeah, we might release more containers, like uh, maybe uh, curl experimental or curl with everything on, all batteries included. I don't know how useful that is. Or maybe we just do that in the, in the GitHub repo, and that's enough use. Um, I want to embed some security attestation, so I want to... Um, uh, you know, I want to first generate the SBOM of the container, and then uh, and, and and then state how we've scanned it. You know, uh, cryptographically. Uh, and anything else? If you have any suggestions, what you guys think? Because I, I I'm kind of keen to for us to reuse containers, um, maybe in testing. I know there's been a few efforts in terms of uh, using containers um, uh, as a, a you know as a self-contained version of Perl uh, for testing, but I don't know how to sort of get there from here. We would need, uh, you know, direction and advice, and I don't want to distract things either. I don't, like, I'm not a big believer in, um, let's just use the latest stuff because, you know, we should. It might not make a lot of sense. Um, I don't know. I do think, uh, you know, with the testing stuff, we are emulating quite a lot. Like, for example, network conditions. I think it would be really quite cool to and, and with Docker networks, you can emulate really bad networks. Mm -hmm. And that's more truthful than kind of what we're doing, like limiting the server. Um, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the network, it's the server emulating. And I think we can maybe use containers for more uh, abstract network torture tests. Um, and that wouldn't mean we'd have to stand up all this stuff. We just have... Uh, a, you know, a network represented in Docker. We, and I've done that a few times in terms of causing, you know, real chaos on the network and seeing how the server and, and the client respond. Um, that might be interesting. I don't know. Uh, right, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have any, a question.